Hello, my incredible women of healthcare. We are going to make 2024 the most transformational year ever. But we can't do it without a little bit of planning. Today, we are diving into a topic that many of us can relate to, and that is debt. You know, we feel a certain way about debt, negatively or positively, because it helps us to accomplish the goal. But regardless of how we feel, we all want to pay it off. We never like to see that amount increasing and just knowing that we have to eventually pay that off. For many of us, it makes us feel overwhelmed. Like I've talked with countless women who feel as if their debt is a burden, who feel as if their debt is just overweighing, who feel as if their debt is preventing them from really achieving the financial freedom that they deserve. I can understand how it would feel that way. You all know my story. I had a bunch of student loan debt and I paid it off aggressively because I wanted to ameliorate that feeling. But in this realm, this economic climate of a recession, that same debt payoff strategy may not work for you. This is why I want to give you some creative ways to pay down your debt effectively in 2024 and, of course, without sacrificing joy. Hello again. My name is Dr. Brittany Halford, and I am your wealth coach and internal medicine physician. And on this channel, we talk about all things money for women in healthcare so that you can have more joy and more wealth in your life because you deserve it. Now, when you're paying down debt, you got to get a little creative. And... Unfortunately, because debt can feel so overwhelming, it clouds our brains and we get so emotional that we can't allow this, you know, here prefrontal cortex. Do you remember that? <laughs> and that executive function to really take action, to be strategic and plan. So today, I want you to take a moment to just breathe out all of the guilt, all of the regret, all of those negative thoughts that you say to yourself about your debt and who you are and associating your identity with your debt. Just let that go in a release because that is the first step anytime you want to get clarity on your next move. You cannot create a plan that is strategic, but also just carrying this negative emotion. It's going to misguide your steps. And you may think, Brittany, this sounds woo-woo. Think what you want. <laughs> I know from coaching so many women in healthcare to pay down their debts that this is the most transformative step that you can take to conquer and crush that debt. It's called behavioral finances or the psychology of money for a reason because we're not immune to our emotions. They're unique to you and they're beautiful, but you just gotta control it just like we're gonna control this debt. All righty, so once you've gotten rid of that emotional baggage, let's start to get creative. When you are creating a plan for your debt, you have to first get really acquainted to understand your numbers so that you can use those numbers to inform your next steps. Now, if you have high interest debt, like credit card debt, you may have heard of a balance transfer. And this is one creative option that you can use to pay off your debts faster because you essentially get to leverage that lower interest rate by moving that debt into another account or with another company and they may give you a 0% or 3% interest rate for a period of time, which will allow you to apply more of your payment to the principal instead of only touching the interest. You know, there's this thing called amortization. And whenever you're thinking about debt or investments, you want to consider how is this money and the capitalization of that interest really going to impact my payments? And credit card companies are trying to avoid negative amortization. However, depending on the amount that you have, you may see that your credit card debt is just ballooning out of control, especially as they continue to raise interest rates. Now, I have an 800 plus credit score and I pay off my balances every month. But even for some of my credit cards, they've raised the interest rates to 24.9%. Now, I used to be more along the lines of 11.9%, and it's just because of the economic climate that we're in. So it is imperative that you are able to really understand your numbers so that you can leverage things like a balance transfer. Now, whenever you're considering a balance transfer or making any money decision, you want to have a really good understanding of what is the potential cost, meaning interest, and what is the definitive cost, meaning fees. because if you 
carry a balance on that credit card of just $1 that may be associated with a fee in the balance transfer. And that fee is often fixed and guaranteed. Therefore, you want to read the fine print of any offer that you're considering before you make your final decision. Because it could be that that 0% interest really does not outweigh the cost of that fee that is being charged on the amount that you're transferring to the company. Another really creative option that you might consider is taking out a personal loan. Sometimes personal loans have a lower interest rate than credit card. And if that is the case, then again, you're doing a debt interest rate arbitrage where you will take that personal loan at a lower interest rate, let's say, for example, 13%, and using that money to pay off a higher interest rate. Now, debt is still debt, right? You're still going to have to pay back that personal loan. But just think about how much of your money will be able to go towards the principal amount of that loan if you can decrease the interest and decrease how fast that debt is going to grow. Another option for paying off your credit card debt to get a line of credit. Typically, lines of credit have a lower interest rate, and so therefore, it will offer you the same benefits of a personal loan so that you can minimize that interest accumulation and pay off your debts much faster. Now, with a line of credit, you really want to look at the fine print to understand because it's a variable rate as well. And so that rate can also increase similar to your credit card. Anytime you are getting a line of credit, it's just like a credit card in which you are borrowing money and you will pay an interest rate on that amount borrowed. There's a maximum limit similar to a credit card, but typically these rates are at a lower interest rate. It will reflect the same on your credit report. Therefore, you want to really make sure that you have that utilization ratio and good standing below 30% in order to not impact your credit score negatively. Now, I've also heard of women who have really got into a tight bond. I had one client before she started to work with me was unable to pay off her credit card debt and was thinking about bankruptcy. She did instead debt consolidation. Do your research when you're considering debt consolidation and ensure that there are no other options available to you. Essentially, what they will allow you to do is when you work with a debt consolidation company, they're going to take all of your loans from all of your creditors and charge you a fee on the amount that they are managing. They will have you establish a savings account and for you to pay a fixed rate into that savings account, then they will negotiate with these credit card companies for a settlement. Please be advised that not all of your debts will be settled by using a debt consolidation company and that oftentimes they may paint this as a glorious picture of like a 0% interest and all of that. Just know that your credit will be impacted by using a debt consolidation company and it will show on your credit report. So this is really like a Hail Mary, the last option. Again, for my client who utilized this company, it was helpful because she was able to pay down the debt faster and pay less. But on the other end of that, we were working together on how to reestablish her credit so that she could purchase her first home, so that she can get credit cards now and use them responsibly because she learned from that lesson. And it is a little bit harder for you to prove yourself as a responsible borrower when you've had previous debt consolidation companies involved. So that's really a last option, but that is something that's available to you even as a woman in healthcare. You could also consider if you contribute it to a 401k, it's taking a loan from your 401k. Oftentimes, this is not disclosed as an option to us in healthcare because this account really is meant for retirement. And so you will be robbing your future self in order to pay down current debts. The benefit of using a 401k, a loan from your 401k, this means that the money essentially is not being effectively taken out. And so therefore, you will not be penalized that 10% for an early withdrawal. So when you have a loan from your 401k, you really want to understand is what are the terms and conditions surrounding that loan. And know that if you change employers, then you're going to have 30, sometimes 60 days to pay that amount back. So if you're going to potentially have some transition in employment, then this is really not a good option for you, especially as we enter this arena of this recession and things just kind of buckling down. 
you want to make sure that you have job security. As people in healthcare, we typically do, but we saw even in the pandemic that we are not completely immune to some of the risk factors that impact other industries. And we don't have 100% job security. The benefit of taking a loan from your 401k opposed to a personal loan or a line of credit is that that interest that you will pay for that loan, you will be paying back to your future self. So you're borrowing the money from your future self, but you will also be paying it back to you. And I think that this is one of the reasons why we just don't think about it because it's not really talked about, but you in fact can do this. Another way to, and this might not be very creative, <laughs> to pay back your debts is to get a side gig. As a nurse, as a physician, therapist, whatever you do in healthcare, you have skills that are valuable to other people. And picking up a side gig sometimes can renew a different part of passions that you've forgotten in the past. Perhaps you're an artist and you're very creative and now you're like, okay, things are a little tight for me. I have this goal to pay down this debt. So now I'm going to, you know, do um, a painting class or something. You buy a couple of supplies and you, you open up your business and you spread the word and you put on these painting events, just as an example. Perhaps you build out these digital products for other nurses, like students, to have um, these templates of how to do their charting or how to gather the information that they need from the charts when they're seeing and rounding on their patients. You have so much creativity and knowledge that you can leverage. So start to think about what are some of the skills and assets that people will pay for? And if you don't know, maybe ask your friends, what am I good at? What would you give me money to do for you? And see, you might get some responses that you may not like, but I think that there will be a couple that will make you think twice on how you can utilize that skill set to bring in more money. So I want you to know that debt payoff is possible and that 2024 is going to be the most transformative year for you, but you got to plan it. And if you are a little lost at where to go in your debt payoff strategy, then I want to present an opportunity for you to enroll in my joyfully free debt payoff course. When you have debt, it feels overwhelming to think about paying for something else to help you to achieve that goal. But just like a line of credit, just like a personal loan, just like a debt consolidation, you will be paying a fee to someone else to help you to achieve that goal. So why not use this time, money to invest in yourself to not only achieve the goal, but to prepare you in the future when you've reached that debt freedom? And that is exactly what my course will do. I had $131,000 of student loans when I graduated from medical school. And I know what to do. <laughs> and no direction. And I figured out a plan through my joyful budgeting method to really understand my cash flow. And that's what you're going to learn in this course, is to understand how your money is moving in and out so you can control the flow of your finances to work for you. And guess what? I have all the spreadsheets, everything built out to make this process simple so that you can start from intention and just thinking about this idea to actually implementing and getting the outcome that you deserve. Also, more so than getting consistent with your cash flow, we'll work on some of those mindset blocks that your debt has been causing you to feel that has been dampening your creativity. And we create a debt strategy that lets you know every month what your payments are going to be. And after one debt is paid off, what to do with the next one. Stop Googling formulas and how to pay off debt as a woman in healthcare. Let this be your last video that you watch about debt payoff because now you will be invested in yourself and know because of the knowledge and the information that you can create a strategy that gives you joy, fulfillment, helps you to mitigate some of those negative emotions because you are a woman who is taking action. And I want to be your guide. My course gives you the high level and high yield information that you can start to take action and shorten those steps from just thinking about it to actually having what you desire. The link is in the bio for you to enroll. And if you have any other questions, just drop them in the comments or you can check me out on Instagram. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, then subscribe and hit the like button. This helps me to reach more women in healthcare. And let me tell you, even though we're high income earners, we still carry the largest burden of student loan debt. And we often are living paycheck to paycheck during retirement. Let's change that narrative. And I 
really, really just ask for your help in changing that narrative so that we can feel empowered in our finances and in creating the life that we desire. Well, I want to thank you in advance for hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel, and maybe even sharing this with a girlfriend. And if you have any questions about debt whatsoever, drop them in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram so we could start to have a money conversation. It's because we don't talk about these topics that they're so taboo and they feel so overwhelming. So let's start to fracture that barrier and let's start engaging in empowering manner and let's empower our next money move through engagement and just candid money conversations. No judgment here, free judgment zone. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one.